The Official Report on Human Activity, or Long for an Elephant, an Essay. 1. Ipso and the Elephant. When Ipso gave birth to what most agreed was an elephant, there were those who tried to act as though it was normal. Well, yes, he was a man, they said, and no one had known he was pregnant, but it was, after all, a small elephant. Prior to the birth, he had been eating strangely and spending an inordinate amount of time alone, but none around him had taken those things as signs that anything unusual was about to occur because he had said that he was a writer or that he wanted to be a writer. He had trouble deciding which of these things to tell people because writing happens so much in the mind that he thought it would be difficult to know when or if he had crossed the threshold. First, he would have to find something to write about. He could write about the factory where he worked and the things he and his co-workers made in the factory. He would have to start at the beginning and that would mean light in the morning. So he tried to begin with the light in his windows in the morning so that he had to go to work versus the light in his windows on the mornings he did not have to go to work. The difference between daylight and work light was much like the difference between sleep on the nights that were not followed by work days and regular sleep. The problem was once he began writing about how the light was and how he slept, it felt like he was trying to walk on slippery rocks that sloped down toward quicksand or how he imagined a slope of slippery rocks would be as he was not much for going to the outdoors. And he made sure to stay in as much as he could when it rained. The fact that he could imagine these things made him lean toward saying that he was a writer as opposed to wanting to be a writer. But the fact that he had gotten his knowledge of quicksand from TV lessened his idea of himself as a writer. 2. Write what you know. If you've worked in a more modern factory than the one where Ipso worked, one built in the 21st century, for example, or if you've never worked in a factory, first of all, count yourself relatively lucky especially if you found another way to get food that is less humbling and absurd than working in a plant. Second, you may not recognize the sort of factory that Ipso worked in. As it was built in the early 20th century, it was noisier and dirtier than most modern factories. It was much harder to find a place where you could be alone with whatever thoughts hadn't been purged by the noise and dirt. Perhaps, the lack of time alone with thoughts made the contemplation of light and sleep seem like a grim, endlessly narrowing spiral. He didn't want to describe it as dark because he was dark, and he associated the dark with warmth, standing by the oven when the sun went down in the late winter with lights dimmed and the bed waiting for him to deliver the heat his body had absorbed from the small kitchen. He was torn between trying to describe the narrowing spiral and trying to find out where it led. He thought he should describe it because that is what writers do. He wanted to find out where it led because he was frightened and fear made him curious, as though he were in a lucid, recurring nightmare. Where would a narrowing path draped in factory light lead? Certainly not to a screened-in summer porch with cold beer on hand and Miles Davis playing. He thought about Miles Davis a lot. Miles was dark like Ipso, but having lived and died in the 20th century was obviously older. Miles produced a tone on the trumpet of unerring beauty and played in a second great band with younger writers whose noise was as fitted and sculpted to jagged music as Miles's was to a clean Gene Toomer narrative. What held Miles and those wilder, younger players together was that Miles' melody led to the same inside dark with hidden sources of illumination. In short, they dreamt together awake, practiced hour after hour the climb 
on raggedy surfaces toward the edge of a cliff whose beauty would be a fantasy if not for the climb, whose beauty could only be grasped in the moments over the white ocean of clouds rolling below the sun, the moments before the plunge where the purity and cold of the air and then the cloud overcame thought and vision respectively, a fall as blind as the stasis of the womb. Miles didn't give many interviews. Essentially, he thought it was all there in the music. No reason to talk about what everyone could hear. For Ipso, it was very strange for a writer to eschew words, even for an interview. But Ipso could still identify with Miles because he knew Miles had difficulty getting along. He could hear it in the alone sound of Miles' trumpet and the heat beneath the loneliness, the harmon mute at the bell of the trumpet honing every breath and note through a tunnel of black light to the inner ear, a path as lean and solitary as it was immutable and unforgiving. And he thought that loneliness may be the only thing he had in common with a great writer. <laughs> 